Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Melissa Smith and I'm the Assistant Curator of Community Programs at the Art Gallery of Ontario. And we are joining today to talk about slow art. And so before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that although we're meeting in a virtual world, the land that the AGO is on is Mississauga Anishinaabe territory. It is also governed by a treaty between the Mississauga of the Credit and the Canadian government. Toronto is Mississauga Anishinaabe territory. It has also been occupied by other Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and Wendat confederacies. Ontario continues to be home to many Indigenous people who live alongside settlers, newcomers, and people whose ancestors were enslaved across the Americas and the Caribbean. We're grateful to live and work on this land. Recognizing this in a meaningful way means making commitments to sharing and upholding responsibilities to all who now live on these lands and the land itself. As a settler, it's so important to me to be able to be mindful of these commitments. Thank you. So the objective for this video is to introduce us to Slow Looking as a precursor to Slow Art Day on April 10th. I'm going to demonstrate how to look slowly with Clarence Alphonse Gagnon's study of a hair in winter from 1922. And this is also part of our close looking series as well. So why slow? Did you know that the average person looks at artwork for approximately three to 10 seconds? That's so fast. I mean, let's even try and do that. That's like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and then bam, you're supposed to kind of understand the artwork. I mean, you see when people look slowly at a piece of art, they make discoveries and personal connections. The most important discovery is that we can see and experience art without being an expert. And that's an exciting discovery. It unlocks passion and creativity, acknowledging that we can all appreciate, appreciate art no matter what. And that's really important. Another advantage is that this is a pretty mindful way of engaging with art. The goal of any mindfulness technique is to experience focused relaxation by deliberately paying attention to thoughts and sensations without judgment. And that's basically what you're doing with slow art as well. This allows you to focus on the present moment. And the hope is that we will feel more relaxed because we're in that moment. And also to be able to take that centered and peaceful feeling away with us for the rest of the day. So how do you participate? Well, right now you're participating by watching this video, but on the official Slow Art Day, which is April 10th, 2021, you can join people all over the world and look at art slowly again. You can pick five artworks and sit with them for 10 minutes each. And that's basically it. If you need some help, we've also picked some artworks from the AGO collection that we think um, are interesting and we'll be sharing them via our social media platforms on April 10th starting at 11 a.m. And we'll also have some prompts for slow looking included with those posts. It's really that simple because the goal is to focus on the art and the art of seeing. So let's get started. I am going to share my screen so that you can see the image that we're talking about today. And I am also going to set a bit of a timer and you can do this too. It's a great strategy, one with maybe a quiet timer on it. And we can start by looking and by getting comfortable. So getting comfortable is, is pretty important. And I'm gonna help us do that by leading us through a short breathing and body scan exercise. And this is really in order to get in touch with your physical self and to kind of get a bit more calm and in the moment. So we're gonna bring our attention, our attention to the body, which is a common way to center. So try and focus on feeling any of the physical sensations that you're feeling in your body. And I'm gonna take pauses throughout the prompts just to give you space to think and to feel. Okay, 
slowly start to pay attention to your breathing and to your body. Lean into being quiet and listen to your environment because it may not be super quiet, but just being in the space and letting the sounds that are around you resonate. Feel your breath as you breathe into your lungs and as the air leaves your nose and your mouth. So let's do that. Let's take four really deep breaths. In. Out. Notice your body from your feet up to the top of your head. Notice any sensation you feel there. Notice your legs. Notice your bottom and hips. Feel your lower back. Then your mid back. And your upper back. Remember to breathe. Feel your shoulders. If there's any tension, try and roll them. It's definitely where I hold a lot of tension. Feel your neck. Feel your face, your forehead, your cheekbones, your jaw, your ears, even your tongue. Try and let all the stress go from your face. Think about your entire head and the crown of your head. Think about everything just kind of dripping away and remembering to breathe the whole time. So now that we're centered, let's take a moment to even look longer at the painting. So what is it that you notice? What stands out to you about this artwork?
take your time. Be patient. Let your eyes wander across the image. Go to the foreground, the middle ground, the background. Let your eyes bounce as well. Let them go where they want to. Try focusing on the details. What draws your eye into the painting? Try not to have any expectations and try to forget anything you know about the artwork. Be open. Is this a portrait? Is it a landscape? Look at the texture. Is it smooth? Can you see the artist's brush strokes? Are there ridges in the paint? How does the artwork move? How does that work with the subject? What colors stand out to you? Are they cool colors? Are they warm colors? How has the artist chosen colors to create a scene? How has the artist used colors to create a sense of light and depth? What do you notice about the perspective? Are we looking down? Are we looking from above? How does our perspective make us relate to the artwork? What shapes stand out to you? How has the artist used organic shapes to create a realistic scene? What symbols stand out to you? Does the hare or rabbit mean something more during this time of year as we shift into spring? Is there a story here? 
What story would you tell? Does this remind you of something you've experienced? What senses would be activated if you were in the painting? What would you feel? What would you smell? What would you touch? What do you think you would hear? What would you taste? Really what's most important here is to trust in your own authority and intuition. Pay attention to your first impressions. Don't underestimate your knowledge of visual culture and lean into why you were drawn to the work in the first place. You also wanna make connections. Your mind will try and make connections between elements of the artwork. These connections might be intended by the artist or unique to you. It doesn't matter. Both are absolutely valid. You can see things through a fresh perspective and multiple perspectives. Do a check-in. How do you feel? Pay attention to how your mind and body respond. This might be in a subtle way or a more overt way. Does the art help you feel calm? Does it irritate you? Does it excite you? Does it trigger any memories? Think also too, as we near the end of this experience, you wanna share your findings. So how do you feel about this artwork now that you've had some time to spend with it and look slowly? Uh, try and summarize your thoughts. This could be in your head. It could be with friends or family. You can even share it on social media. Uh, we have hashtag, so hashtag slow art day 2021, or you can tag us too at AGO Toronto or at slow art day. And really the other thing to consider here too is to look again, try a different artwork, the same artwork, straight away or after a coffee break on a different day? How does it look in other conditions? How does it look when you're in a different state of mind? That's what's so exciting about art, that you can revisit it and really make meaning um, based on how you read uh, the artwork. I'm also just shifting our slide here to show you that one of the reasons I was inspired to speak to Gagnon's artwork is that we are actually talking to about our portraits of resilience call for art. So I love Gagnon's portrait of a hare, and I thought that that would be a great way to remind us about portraits of resilience. And it's an open call for artists of all ages to participate in an online exhibition of artworks showcasing moments of emotion and resilience in everyday life. If you haven't had a chance, please take a look at it on our website and please consider submitting. We would love to see your artwork. And I do hope that engaging today with slow looking um, really helps sort of connect to a, a little bit more intentionally with art and to its restorative power. And I re I'm really, really hopeful that we were able to do that today together. And I wanna thank you for spending some time with me and I wish you a great rest of the week.